<laughs> Different settings. Yeah, me not for ask you to identify the settings. Look, you can see the settings, right? <laughs> what YouTube family you can never tell with the Maverick, you know? You can never tell. But you what no? A burning issue. Yeah, you know, say in Jamaica, for decades now, for years now, it's a local football issue. But me think it's worthy. For decades, we have tried to develop a professional football league in a Jamaica. For decades. Um, you know the mitigating factors against it, you know, the economy. And you know the football, the football culture in Jamaica is weak. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the disposable income. All of them something. See? And we have a we have a wagonist culture. We don't really love football purely, you know. Most of the people who love football in Jamaica, they love, love it by season. And love it depends on the team who are playing and depend on if the team are winning and all them something. So we have all of them mitigating factors there. I go against you know, the development of a full professional league in Jamaica. But people still are trying. Because you have some football soldiers in Jamaica who still are trying. And in fairness, the intention is to develop, to try and develop a Premier League. A Premier League football. Um, a league that is fully professional. Now, another question now. There's a, there's a development that's, that's currently, currently taking place in the local football um, space now. Where one particular club, coached by Lenny High, the club named Chapleton Maroons, Come from Nunga Chapleton. That is, you know, the adjacent to Clarendon College. Synonymous, one and the same. Because basically, as, as me, I explain to you, know, and basically the same players who play for the Chapleton Maroos play for Clarendon College. Lenny I coach both teams. Now, this is where the crooks of the matter lie now. Chapleton Maroons qualified to play in the Premier League this season. They are currently playing in the Premier League. But they, they went through the qualifiers using, I think, about 14 or 15 at the Clarendon College schoolboys. Because the, the qualifiers were played before the schoolboy football season. So the schoolboy football season coming now, Clarendon College now, the same set of players, 14 of them, play schoolboy football, then win the Dacosta Cup, then win the Oliver Shield, best team in the schoolboy football this season. Schoolboy football season done. As per the rules now, the players now ought to be allowed to play Premier League. Hear the stumbling block now. Schoolboy football season done. Successful schoolboy football season for Clarendon College and Lenny Hyde. When you come around the Premier League now, if you go represent you now, the rules of the Premier League prevent him from playing more than five amateur players at a time. And that is the classification given to the schoolboys because they don't want, they're not signing professional contracts just yet. And you can understand why they're not doing it because it are going to jeopardize the possibility in the future if they get like college scholarships to go to the States. This would have disqualified them because they would have been classified now as professional players if they sign a professional contract. Right? And Lenny, of course, of course is up in arms. Me talk to him personally and it all over the media in Jamaica now. All Lenny want to do is play the youth them where he use and play to qualify for the Premier League, if you play them now in the Premier League. And he's being, he, well, he can't do that as per the rules of the Premier League. JFF explained the, the situation. They are aligned with CONCACAF in terms of the rules, and the rules are according to CONCACAF. If, if the Premier League clubs in Jamaica want to participate in the CONCACAF club championships, then the majority of the players in the league must be classified as professional players, meaning they must sign professional contracts. You get me? But here's my problem with that now. A years, in fact, decades, no for we, a ball for young players in Jamaica play the top flight football as a means to them, them proper development. Because we don't have academy structures in Jamaica. You know? We don't have formal and functional youth academies. You know? The clubs in Jamaica don't have the formal youth system. You know? So the young players in Jamaica between the ages of 16 and 18 and 19, between say, 16 and 19, Outside of schoolboy football, they may, may have no competition for play either, you know. You get me? So the best bet they have for them development is to try and get them into professional, not professional, but Premier League football if they are good enough. And that is why what Lenny High did. I think it was a brilliant thing that Lenny High did, you know. And people like me would have loved to see it happen all across the island. That would have ensured the proper development can where you gonna know you know you are use those 16 the best 16 and 17 and 18 year old them now you know and use them play a season or two or three of big man football if you try and qualify to the Premier League Lenny did it successfully 
See? But at the, as it is now, the development of them players, the majority of them players, they stop because they can't play the Premier League. Which is the highest level, you know. The qualifying was not the highest level, you know. So they come up a notch now for playing at the qualifying now for further them development. And look, this thing about professional football, a lip service, you know. Having a professional football league in Jamaica, a lip service, you know. 10 and 20 and 30 thousand dollars a month can't classify no youth as professional in Jamaica, you know. You get me? So if Conquer can for hold the JFF, I mean, accountable for, 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 for have a professional league account to for them definition. Then they put some money in the football league, put more money if they might put any in the professional league, then so that the players can get a reasonable salary, so that they can abide by the rules of professionalism. But all you speak a man now, the young youth, them now, if you call themselves professional and a $30,000 a month, them again. And you are stop the, the youth them for play because you want to call the league a professional league. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. And it is counter to the development and counter to the progress of the young, the development of the young footballers in a Jamaica. That are the main problem we have with it. As a big advocate, you know, and the elevation of youth for playing our top flight, you know. Because we don't have enough players. We used to have this stupid um, under 21 league where we used to play alongside the um, the Premier League in you know, Jamaica, you know. For years we are cost at the league there, you know, till they have to dash it eventually, you know. Because my, my thinking was that a youth at 18, 19, and 20, if him good enough, him supposed to play Premier League football. Him not supposed to play no under 21 league. Jamaica not have the, 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 the quality there. That depth of quality there in the numbers for support of under 21 league and a Premier League in the same club. We don't have it. Yeah. So what we used to do them time, we used to peep cross England and Europe and Belgium and them places and see them have under 21 league. And feel sorry if you have an under 21 league too. No. We must stop the pushes and tailor what we're doing to our reality. And our reality now is that those clubs in Europe and all of them places where, where, where them rules are yeah, make up our final. Them club they you know have them formal youth development structures, you know. Them have them formal youth competition where the youth them play, you know. You get what I said to you? So what we are doing now, we are copy where the man them do, and we don't have it, it, it can't fit our circumstance. It's a joke thing. I'm a sympathize with Lenny Big Time and the Chapleton Maroons. This is no longer a Chapleton Maroons problem, you know. This is now a Jamaica football problem. Because any rule that is, is counter to the development of our young football players cannot be a good rule for Jamaica. Whether they are run up behind Kankakaf and the administrators are run up and down behind Kankakaf and say this Kankakaf one. It is counterproductive to Jamaican football. But to the professional league. How much money do not pay the youth in my time about professional league? A lip service is not a professional league. And then now you start the development of it. Look here. Look here. By all intents and purposes, you know. What the football clubs in Jamaica do, the best bet the football clubs in Jamaica have, you know, is for, like when Lenny do with the youth, the Chapleton Maroons and Clarendon College, develop the players to a level and try your best and get them some contracts overseas, outside of Jamaica, where they can go play in some real professional leagues and not a lip service professional league like where we have here so. And that is a process that has been derailed by this particular rule. In theory, if it continues on and on and like, on like this, you know, this is going to be now limiting, you know, the amount of young amateur players that we can play in our, in our, in our Premier League. So what we are going to effectively have bound up our Premier League, you know, with some old 26 and 27 and 28 year old man, you know, we don't have no future in a, in a, to get a contract overseas, you know. Whether we like it or not, you know, we have a development football. Is a, what we have is a developing and a selling football situ situation in Jamaica. You know. We don't have the elements to have a full professional football league. We don't have it yet. We don't write it off totally, but we don't have it yet. And right now we are trying to grapple with reconciling, wanting to be professional, and then doing the right thing for our development. Because the most crucial thing in a Jamaica football right now is to develop some young players and get them out of here to play professional football. You get me? So I don't know somebody needs to negotiate with Kankakaf and explain to them the dilemma we face. 
Because the youth, they're more extreme on that school boy football, they have, you know. Otherwise, they don't have no avenue for development, you know. They don't have no formal. The, the, the clubs, like I say, the clubs in Europe have them youth system and them have them age group teams. The club them in Jamaica are barely, barely, barely surviving for try and maintain one team, which is the Premier League team. Joke thing. Anyway, tell me one thing about my meeting. We well, like the new settings. <laughs> it's temporary. You see it? I touch. I touch me. I touch the road now. You see it? <laughs> but me have to talk to you about this urgently. What do you think about my meeting? Tell me what do you think about my meeting. Talk to me good now, man, before me, before me sail out, man. Mm? Take off like a plane. <laughs> me and the taxi man them out there now. Anyway, tell me what do you think about my meeting. About that issue, yeah. Burning issue for me. Huh? <laughs>